Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our session on uh, application, admissions, and housing. In the coming 30 minutes, we will be covering these three topics. Uh, my name is Tommaso, and I will be your host for today. I uh, was a student here at the Han University of Applied Sciences in International Business. And during this session, I am uh, kindly joined by Hossein, our current student in International Business, and Caroline, our uh, expert for admission, application, and housing for today. First of all, thank you very, thank you very much, guys, for uh, joining me during this session today. Uh, first, uh, would you like to maybe say a word about yourselves before we get started? Uh, well, I'm Caroline. Yeah. I work at the admissions office for over 13 years now. Uh, we are with four, so three more uh, uh, colleagues, and we are part of the international office. Wonderful. And Hossein, how about yourself? Yeah, I'm um, I'm Hossein. I'm the I'm an international business student. Currently, on my second year and doing management and specialization. And um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Great. Thank you again for being here. Uh, so just a quick reminder, there is a chat function that is associated to this uh, live show. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them away and then we will be answering to them at the end of, the, of both sessions on application and housing. So to get things started, we have a video showcasing the different steps that uh, need to be taken in order for international students to apply at the Han University of Applied Sciences. So please enjoy. Would you like to study at Han? In 88 seconds, we explain the steps you need to take to apply for a program at Han. Want to join us for a moment? You apply on Study Link and follow the various steps. Too early is better than too late, but do it at least before the application deadlines. Within one week of applying, you automatically receive an email about how to create a Han account. Once you've done that, our admissions office emails you to let you know everything we need from you. Send the details to the admissions office. Do you need to do an English proficiency test? As soon as you've scheduled it, let us know the date. Don't have all the info yet? No problem. Send us the info you do have. For example, your grades list instead of your degree certificate. When everything is complete, Han assesses your admission. If everything is in order, you receive an email with the result of your application. Did you get a positive result? Then continue with the following steps. You're halfway there. We invite you for a matching session. That's an online interview where we check whether the program matches your wishes and interests. If you are then accepted, all that is left is to pay your tuition fees. Congratulations, you're now a Han student there are still lots of things to do before you actually start studying, such as housing and planning your trip. So, right on time. Did you know that you can track the progress of your application in My Han Portal? Good luck and see you soon at Han. Questions? Go to hanuniversity.com slash admission. All right, welcome back. Uh, so we have just seen uh, a few of the steps that need to be take uh, need to take place uh, before becoming a Han student. So Hossein, how was it for you to enroll at the Han University of Applied Sciences? How did you find the whole application process? I found it actually pretty easy. Um, mm -hmm. You also have the portal of Study Link, which is for all universities. Um, and first, I uh, first I asked for like a brochure online, and they sent it to me, and I read the whole thing. Then I uh, followed the steps, applied for here. It took like a week and a half, I think, a week to get back to me. And um, yeah, they told me like it's gonna, they're gonna reach out to me soon about the uh, application because they received it. And it was like probably a week afterwards or two weeks afterwards that I got an interview. Mm -hmm. And I had an interview with Mr. Ton, he's also a professor here. And yeah, and then once you're done with the interview and they see you're a match, you're gonna get in. Yeah. Right, sounds pretty straightforward. Excellent. So, Caroline, when should you apply in order to receive an answer within reasonable time frames? Um, the application is um, open uh, in October already. Okay. So, last year, October, was September 22. So, yeah, apply as soon as possible. Does it actually help to apply beforehand? Because maybe some of the students don't really know yet if they are 
a right fit for a specific program. Is it maybe possible to apply for different programs simultaneously? Yes, you can apply for four different uh, programs in StudyLink. Um, well, yeah, you can await the matching to mm -hmm. see if the, the program suits your, uh, your needs and uh, then make uh, a final decision. Right. When did you make your final decision, Hussain? Well, I already had uh, the decision to come to the Netherlands and to Han. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I already had made my decision because I always liked Netherlands. And I also have some family members here, so it was like a no-brainer for me to come yeah. here. And um, yeah, I already had made my decision, but I just needed to know about the procedure of applying. But Han was really helpful, and I got the information, and I just knew from like a year beforehand that I'm going to apply here. So, yeah. There you go. And Caroline mentioned matching, and that's also something that we have just seen on the video before. Um, and so your experience was together with a teacher. Sometimes it is with a teacher, other times it's actually with another fellow student. But mm -hmm. how was the experience for you? And is there anything that you would recommend a student to prepare before the interview? Yeah, um, I didn't practice much because I knew about uh, you know my ambitions. Mm -hmm. But if you if you if you want to be fluent during the interview. Yeah, of course, have, have like a, you know, have like a paper, uh, like a word file in front of you. Just practice it and you're going to be all fine. They're really friendly. Um, they're going to ask you about your ambitions, your interests within uh, Han and like, why do you want to apply here? Why choosing international business, communication, engineering or, you know, such. And um, the rest is just a friendly talk, actually. And they're going to, you know, soon you're going to find out you know, whether they're you know, a favorite to, or suitable to be here, and it's going to be easy, just, uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty fast process, I would say. Yeah, and that's also quite re-encouraging to hear. Uh, speaking of matching, actually, just like I mentioned before, sometimes it is also the case that you get to do this interview together with another fellow student. And actually, throughout my time at the Han, I got to do the uh, matching calls. So um, every week or so, I got to interview an international student. And that, needless to say, it was a lot of fun. But then at the same time, um, it also explains that it's a pretty uh, simple process by which you don't really need to be too scared or overwhelmed yeah. from. But of course, just be natural, just be yourself. And it's just really a way for the hunt to test to what extent you uh, match the, the course that you have applied for. And again, if you feel like applying for different programs, Caroline told us that it is also possible um, and that you can uh, just do several matching interviews and that it's also another way to understand what kind of program really fits you. Wonderful. So uh, a question that we get asked all the time. It's uh, regarding the English requirements. So Caroline, would you mind explaining to us a little more how that works? Well, if you are uh, Dutch or German, we will not ask for an English test. Um, if you studied in um, the UK, in America, in Canada, in Australia, we will not ask for one. Mm -hmm. Some diplomas of some countries will also exempt you. But from most other students, we will ask a worldwide acknowledged English test. Um, it's one of the issues. You need a diploma and you need to prove that you know sufficient, you have a sufficient level of English. Yep. So, yeah. So, most of fun. the time, we require one. Right, indeed. And is there also a level that you're asking for or um, not quite? Because I know, for example, if you do the IELTS test, um, that's an, an automatic pass, but do you need to have a certain grade for it? Yes, you need to have a certain grade. Um, you need an IELTS of six and a TOEFL, also a worldwide uh, known test. Um, you need a score of 80. Okay, perfect. And Hossein, did you have to perform either of these tests before starting your studies? Yeah, I took the IELTS test mm -hmm. and uh, the minimum, as uh, Caroline mentioned, uh, it was six. And yeah, back then I passed with six and a half. Okay. Uh, not gonna lie, I was a bit lazy with the studying. Mm -hmm. And you still <laughs> but, managed through. Yeah, yeah. but uh, now it's all good, I'm fluent, and you know, being in an international environment and speaking English all the time, you're just gonna yeah. do fine. Yeah. 
Great. And let's talk a little about tuition fees as well. That's always uh, a bit of a relevant matter, of course. So, um, Caroline, would you mind to tell us something about it? Well, in general. In general, yeah. Well, Just take um, the question as you wish. There is a difference between AU and non-AU tuition fees. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be showing on the screen at this moment. Uh, the tuition fee for the European students is for all, um, all programs the same. Um, for non-AU, it, uh, it can differ uh, per program. Uh, well, you also can see the deadlines on the screen um, for the application. Uh, the payment of the tuition fee for the European students is in May. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you can pay in May. And for the non-AU, um, they need to pay the financial guarantee. Uh, there is a deadline 1 June. All right. And do I have to pay everything together or can I also pay in installments? Well, there's also a difference between the European and the non-AU students. Uh, the, Euro the European students will be invited to leave payment details in StudiLink in May. Mm -hmm. um, they can pay in parts. Uh, they will agree the Han will take the fees from their account in September. The non-AU, they need to pay for the financial guarantee, which includes the tuition fees, and there the deadline is 1 June, and they need to pay directly to Han in one go. And why do non-European students need a financial guarantee? <laughs> um, the financial guarantee includes um, the entry visa and a residence permit. So that's uh, the important issue okay. for the non-AU. So we have seen more or less how the whole journey begins. So you apply on this website called StudyLink, which is the universal, uh, or not universal, but like the Dutch-based website to apply for any type of higher education. Uh, and it always works similarly. And it is, like Hassan said, a pretty straightforward process. Um, then we've seen um, how that continues into uh, a matching interview, and then it finalizes with um, getting to uh, pay the tuition fees. That is really the, the last step of the process. What happens after that? You probably need to start scheduling your travels to the Netherlands, right? Hassan, would you mind sharing with us a bit of your experience? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, afterwards, when you get the um, admission and you know you're in, you start to, you know, um, First, probably the first thing would be the housing. You want to find a place, and um, I think the housing department of Han is very helpful in that regards. Mm -hmm. um, the first place I lived in was a student building, and they helped me with finding it. Uh, of course, there are some student uh, student places um, that are collaborating with Han, but this, uh, those were full, but they still mm -hmm. the departments, they sent me information regarding other uh, student buildings. And I applied for them and I got in. But I would say, like, make sure to look for places two months in advance, at least. Um, there are many places that you can find. And, yeah, I think that's the first thing that you need to do before coming here. Yes, yeah. and we will definitely talk further about housing in just a minute with our upcoming segment, which yeah. concerns uh, that. Um, so thank you for already introducing yeah. the topic a little. But uh, Caroline, according to you also, what does uh, a student need to, to do to prepare before coming to the Netherlands? Do you have any type of advice coming from your experience in admissions? Well, Hassan is, is correct. Mm -hmm. Housing is a, a huge topic. Um, furthermore, well, you need to arrange your exams, of course, at mm -hmm. home and getting your diploma done. Um, furthermore, preparing, preparing the trip, yes, mm -hmm. is important. And is it very important to have your diploma already when you're applying, or can you also turn it in at a later stage? Now, as we watched the small video, mm -hmm. send what you have. Of course, lots of students will get their diploma this summer. Yeah. Yeah, and I can also say from my experience, because I graduated in a high school in Italy, uh, the whole Italian bureaucracy is just a little slow sometimes, perhaps. Uh, 
Yeah. I'm sure that for some of you it doesn't sound like anything too new, but then the Han, I felt like it was really, really understanding when I couldn't receive my diploma before the month of September. So uh, sometimes it's really okay to just provide as much as possible, really like great lists, etc., until you um, have your final documents ready and set to go. All right, leaving it on this note, we have already introduced a bit the topic of, uh, of housing, which is actually going to be our upcoming segment. Um, so during the following few minutes, we will be uh, discussing what it's like to, uh, to live in the Netherlands um, and also what the uh, different issues or problems could be like. Uh, but in order to jump into this topic, we have two videos for you. Uh, so let's first see what the housing process is like for non-European students. Did you know Arnhem and Nijmegen are two of the best cities to live in for international students? Are you a student from outside the EU? Stick with us for just a couple of seconds to see how to get a room. The first step, already paid the financial guarantee including housing? Our housing department will start arranging a room for you. Then Han Housing will send you an e-voucher within two weeks of payment. Are you starting in September? Then they'll start arranging a room in May. Starting in February? Then you can expect to be notified in or after December. You can use that voucher within one week to choose a room on the Book Your Room website in your preferred location. The quicker you are, the more choice of rooms there is for you. Choose the room that suits you best. You can also choose additional packages, like kitchen utensils and bed linen. SSH and provides the rooms in Arnhem and Nijmegen for Han students. You will now receive the housing contract from them. Sign it and send it back. Congratulations! You will receive an email from Han Housing before the start of your contract, with information about the check-in time right before the start of your study and more. Finally, come to check-in week and pick up your keys. Time's up! What now? Make it a nice home! Welcome to Han! One last thing, the contract is always for one year, or one semester for February starters. You can find the locations of Han housing rooms at hanuniversity.com slash housing. All right, and now let us take a look of what the process looks like for European students. Did you know Arnhem and Nijmegen are two of the best cities to live in for international students? Are you an EU student? Stick with us for just a couple of seconds to see how to get a room. The number of rooms we're allowed to offer as a university is limited. We work with waiting lists on a first-come, first-served basis. After enrolling, send a request to han.housingoffice at han.nl as soon as possible so you get added to this waiting list. In the meantime, we recommend you also look for a room nearby on your own. Han Housing will send you an email with tips and tricks for finding a room. In your own search, don't forget to check if your room is furnished or if you still need to buy furniture, for example, second-hand. In June and January, we will know how many rooms are available for the Han waiting list. Based on your place on the waiting list, you may or may not be sent an e-voucher. Use this e-voucher to choose your room. Once you've chosen, leave your payment information as soon as possible. SSH and provides the rooms in Arnhem and Nijmegen for Han students. You will now receive the signed housing contract from both of them. Congratulations! You will receive an email from Han Housing before the start of your contract with information about the check-in time right before the start of your study and more. Finally, come to the check-in time and pick up your keys. Didn't get a room through Han? Continue your own search. Found a room for yourself? Keep in mind that you'll need to pay a deposit. This can add up to a few months of rent. And time's up. One last thing. If you run a room from SSH and through Han, the contract is always for one year or one semester for February starters. After that, you need to look for a room yourself. You can find the location of Han housing rooms at hanuniversity.com slash housing. All right, welcome back. We're still here with Hossein and Caroline. Uh, so first of all, from these videos that we have just watched together, we have seen that there are a few differences between European and non-European students when it comes to housing. So would you mind explaining to us, Caroline, a little bit about these uh, differences? Are there, for example, um, distinctions in terms of the chances by which you can get a room if you're European or non-European? Oh yeah, Tommaso, there is a difference between AU and non-AU. Mm -hmm. We just watched the great videos. Um, 
the um, Han uh, rents um, accommodation from S S H N. The places are limited. Um, the Han decided to uh, give the non AU students the priority um, because it's more difficult for them to find housing uh, in another way. They are not very used to the Dutch uh, system and they cannot come for a pre-research. So for the European students, they can apply also for housing and they will be placed on a waiting list for in case we have housing left. And if you're placed on this uh, waiting list, is there, let's say, an actual chance of you getting the room? Um, yeah, first of all, I need to mention there is a housing issue, not mm -hmm. only in Arnhem and Nijmegen, but in uh, the whole country. Right. It's very hard to find housing for uh, students. Um, we work with a waiting list. Well, as we could see in the video, it's first, uh, first in, first serve. So. Um, if you're a European student, apply for housing as soon as you applied for a program. There you go. Yeah. Yes, that's definitely a very handy tip for the people that are listening from home to really apply for housing as soon as you can. Even yeah. though you're not yet accepted uh, as a student at the Han, it's always a good time to already start applying. And then what happens if you don't get accepted? Um, if you don't, well, um, in... May, we are going to uh, check uh, how many uh, non-AU students we will have and how many rooms we have left. Mm -hmm. um, we check the waiting list. If you are not accepted, well, you are from the waiting list. Yeah. So it's impossible to get a housing if you don't get accepted. There you go. So again, another very valid reason to apply yeah. again, the sooner the better. All right, so you also mentioned SSHN. Can you give us a brief explanation of what that is? Mm, the SSHN is an organization which arranges accommodation, for, especially for students, in and around Arnhem and Nijmegen. Um, the HAM uh, rents, again, rents some few of their accommodations mm -hmm. are for the HAM, uh, but they offer a wide variety of other rooms, uh, studios, uh, with shared facilities, or rooms alone in the center or not. So yes, it's worthwhile to register at SSHN anyway. Yes. And Hassan, have you ever lived with SSHN or, or not? Uh, no, I haven't uh, lived in a building with SSH, but um, I have friends who are living there, mm -hmm. and uh, I have been to their buildings. Uh, we also have like a big one nearby. They call it the Helix. That's also mm -hmm. the big one. And when the you come to the, the school, left, yes, right? the colorful building, you can see it. And I think they offer rooms and also studios. So it's like a mix of both. Uh, personally, I th the rooms were full. So I, mm -hmm. as I said, I was directed towards uh, another student building, which wasn't part of SSH, but uh, it's it's quite nearby because you also get the option mm -hmm. to find places in Felp, which is a a small city next to Arnhem, but it's really close. Here, when you say like another city, it's like 10 minute biking. So yeah, yeah um, you also get options there. So right. yeah, look, uh, even at the, in the, at the nearby cities, mm -hmm. you also get an options there. And so what does your current housing situation look like, just to get a bit of a feel and perspective from your side? Yeah, well, in my case, I got a bit lucky. Well, mm -hmm. more than a bit. But yes. um, my uncle is a landlord of the place that I live now. Uh, I live in an apartment actually a seven minute walk to, uh, to here. So um, yeah, I, but it's a shared apartment. So it's not like I can afford it by myself. Mm -hmm. I share it with other people, um, also from other countries. And um, yeah, at the moment I have my own room, but always the kitchen and like the bathrooms are shared with other students, of course. Uh, I think o only in the case of a studio, you only have it to yourself, but right. otherwise, 
is normally shared. And yeah. then, of course, if you decide to opt for a studio, you have to take into consideration that there might be a little bit of a premium price to pay for of having course. everything by yourself. But do you actually mind sharing the common facilities, or is that a bit of an uh, issue for you in certain circumstances? Yeah. I think it's really important if you settle with the housemates about, like, okay, maybe once a week do cleaning and, like, okay, what are the priorities within the place that you're living? Uh, what you should focus on, well, what to do, and um, yeah, just uh, you can easily keep it neat if you have like a mutual uh, agreement. Yeah, I would say. right. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I've also yeah. always been uh, sharing my my living flat together with other um, like different housemates, and and it's really really true what you're saying. You always yeah. have to come to common terms together in terms of creating a nice living environment. Mm -hmm. And now I have a question for you, Caroline, because we have seen from the video that um, in most cases, when you rent a room through SSHN, of course, it's great for a number of reasons. You don't really need to arrange too many things yourself, and you can already have a place to stay even prior to coming to the Netherlands, which is quite a luxury. But the contract is only for one year maximum, or in some cases, even only six months. So what happens afterwards? Afterwards, you need to find your own accommodation. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Han, uh, Han Housing Office can help you with useful and trustful landlords uh, where you can go afterwards. Right. And is it difficult to get something uh, like without the SSHN? No, you can, hmm, you can find um, housing... Uh, well, not through SSIN, but on on individual basis. Yeah, it's it's not really easy, but uh, you have students to help you. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as you're here, you have Facebook groups, and people move uh, a lot. So yeah. Yeah, there you go. That is. Yes, as soon as you're here, it's more easy to find. Yeah. That's a yeah. very, very realistic type of scenario. And that's also what I would recommend doing regardless. Like even though one year may seem like a lot of time, you know, and you are aware of the fact that the contract will be expiring. And if you're already around, then it's always worthwhile going for some viewing evenings, for example, in which you get to sit together with other, uh, with the current roommates in a certain room, mm -hmm. for example, and just really like apply for housing, even though it might look like it might be perhaps too early, like to go to a viewing in March, for a room that you will start renting from September, for example, it's never going to be too early. It's always quite worth the, uh, the case. Yeah. And um, I'm not sure if it's for all places, but it can also be a question for the people who are watching. Um, mm -hmm. Because at the place that I'm living now, they have like some sort of fiscal year. So in July, depending on the energy, gas prices and stuff, the um, housing price changes. So right. this year it was raised for me like by 50 euros this year, so that might also be something that's applicable to other places, yeah. I'm not sure. To keep it's... in mind, especially during yeah. these really critical times, um, yeah, that's a very, very good good thing to, to be aware of, of yeah. for sure. Yeah. The price range yeah. for rooms is about 350 to 500, mm -hmm. and yes, what you mentioned, uh, every year there might be uh, a little bit a of raise. twitching in the prices. Yeah. 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 Yes, and thank you for giving us this indication of 350 to 500. That is what most people can take into consideration. And of course, maybe 350, you have to accept like a more, um, like a, a bit of a further location perhaps compared to a more central area. And maybe you can also have a, a bit of a smaller sp um, space for yourself. And maybe you need to share a number of facilities. Whereas maybe if you pay the higher end of the budget, maybe you can also have a bit more. Um, yeah, place for yourself, and maybe you can also live a bit more central, perhaps. Um, we often get questions about the deposit since we're covering the financials right now. Is there, do people usually ask you to pay um, something up front, or how does that work? Whoever wants to take the question. I know the SSHN does not mm -hmm. ask a deposit. Okay. But if you have individual landlords, they sometimes ask a deposit. One or two months uh, rent is common. Yeah. Is that your yeah. situation, yeah, for example? Yeah, that is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, I had it with the other student building I used to live in. Mm -hmm. uh, I paid one month. and Oh, three months, sorry. Uh, but with the current one, the apartment, I only paid for one month. Okay. Um, and so, important, yeah. you get it back, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, really important to keep in mind. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, so um, that is um, the time that we had uh, together on this, uh, on this session. However, we're not finished yet because we have some of the questions uh, being asked from home. So uh, please, to any of the people that are watching, if there's anything that we have covered so far that you feel like you would like to ask away, please do so. Uh, and in just a moment, we will be again sitting here together to answer those questions. Uh, but just to recap what we have had so far, so we started off this session talking a little bit about the application and admissions procedures, what it entails, what the, the, what the different steps are, and uh, how the HAN can provide you uh, support during all of the different stages. We've also seen that it's a pretty reasonable uh, type of, um, of um, application procedure in which there are not so many things that you should be worrying about. You can also apply for different programs simultaneously in case you're not finalized with your decision yet. Um, we have also taken a look at how the housing situation looks like when you decide to move to either Arnhem or Nijmegen for your study process. Uh, so um, that can be, in some cases, arranged by the HUN already, or in other cases, um, especially if you are a student from the European Union, you might need to arrange things by yourself, but that is nonetheless still doable as long as you apply and look for th something right on time. All right, so we are now back all together. So uh, we have received one question so far um, from a student that is asking the following. My finals are scheduled for May and June 2022, so I won't be able to submit my final diploma yet. Is that a problem? Caroline, would you like to take this question? No, that is not a problem. Um, you can apply and uh, send in the grade list you have, your most recent grade list. Remember, most of the students starting in September um, did not yet start with their exams and they don't have a diploma yet. So they will probably get it in summer. Um, well, the absolutely, absolute final date will be after start even. Uh, so there's plenty of time to Wonderful. send in the diploma. Fair enough. And we have a second question. So let's say I get a spot at the Han. I do all of the different procedures and then I get housing. What is the first thing I'll have to do once I land there? Maybe Hossein, this could be a question for you. Yeah, well, um, Han really helps with the procedure. So if you have any questions regarding opening a bank account, for instance, doing administration and stuff, they're going to help you. Well, the first thing that you want to do is get the residence permit card, of course, mm -hmm. um, the civil ID. And the Han actually uh, helps you with that. Uh, they, the photos are being taken at Han too, and they're going to tell you when it's going to be available and how it's going to be, and you're going to be all informed about it. And also about the administration and stuff, you can also ask questions uh, from the departments, especially the international one, mm -hmm. uh, because you do need your social security number, which here is referred to as BSN uh, number. And uh, that one is, yeah, you can also... Uh, they're going to help you with that and you're going to get that in no time. So the first month you're going to be busy with administration and stuff and um, yeah, and the ID and uh, getting to know the school. But it's going to be all fine. They're going to help you if you need uh, help. Yeah. Excellent. Yes, thank you for, uh, for informing us about that because those are, of course, some more bureaucratic matters that are really important to be um, taken care of during your first stages at the Han already or living in the Netherlands per se. Um, however, at 4 o'clock this afternoon, we will be having a session in which we'll be covering visa and scholarships. So also for the people at home, uh, if you decide to tune in, you will hear more about all of the different factors that Hossein has already mentioned. So what is a BSN number? How do I register? at City Hall, et cetera, et cetera. So that, those will all be covered during that session. Um, and we have gotten also another question from a student from home. Uh, again, thank you so much for everyone that is engaging with us and asking these questions. So the question is, what is the average cost of living besides tuition fees? Who wants to take this question? Um, I think it varies depending mm -hmm. on the lifestyle that you have. Um, if you want to leave the low budget, the student life, you know, um, you have to cut out, cut on some uh, some uh, expenses, of course. But uh, for me personally, at the moment, uh, for non-housing uh, stuff, I pay I think around 500 to 600. But I pay a lot because I do a lot of stuff. So if you you can also go for lower, for instance, food, I would say like 
maybe with 200 you can get like proper grocery stuff and you can cook and everything mm -hmm. and for the rest uh, and clothing it, it really depends on how you're gonna expend your uh, money uh, uh, you know uh, how, you, how you're gonna spend it because I do go like to class uh, other classes you know uh, other workshops and other places and bars and drinks also you know uh, you're gonna pay for them and they're mm -hmm. not gonna be cheap um, so as I said, it really depends on your lifestyle, but uh, yeah. you can also do it with the minimum. Yeah. Exactly. I couldn't agree more, really. It's so much a question regarding the lifestyle, but what is great is that really the, the Netherlands is a place that um, is quite suitable for students in a way. Yeah. So if you are a student, there are a number of discounts that you can take advantage of. There are also a number of different um, facilities or things that you don't even have to pay at all. Uh, so, um, for example, if you get to work next to your studies as an international student, sometimes you can even apply for free transportation um, or free travel around the whole country, which to me sounds absolutely insane because in the country where I'm from in Italy, I could never imagine anything yeah. similar taking place. So um, so there are definitely really many ways around yeah. um, like budgeting around the Netherlands. If you want to go for a bit of a more higher end uh, lifestyle, of course, you need to take into account perhaps a bit of a larger budget for sure. True. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind, uh, the free transportation normally applies to EU students, but for non-EU it's uh, not that pricey. Like mm -hmm. I pay 34 euros per month and I get to travel for free on the weekends with a train to go. everywhere. Yeah. You can go to multiple cities throughout the day on the weekends and also you get the 40% discount in non-rush hours throughout the weekend weekend. That's it. That's a very yeah. good tip. So for the people at home, there are yeah. definitely many ways around, especially because if you're like traveling from a foreign country, you come to the Netherlands, maybe you just want to travel around a little, see yeah. all of the different hotspots that this beautiful country has to offer. So yeah. uh, that's a very valid tip. And now, Caroline, we have a question for you. Can you explain a little more about the Book My Room app? Are you familiar with this app? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, I know, uh, not exactly how it works, but yeah. um, we will uh, we will wait for all the payments of the financial guarantees to be in. Um, deadline for payment will be one June. Uh, after this, we are going to see uh, what what rooms we need for uh, the non-AU students, and uh, we will send them a voucher. Mm -hmm. uh, with this voucher, you can book your room on this website. Um, the earlier you will book, the better, well, the more choice you will have in housing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, as soon as you have the voucher, just check the website and then you can book your room. Um, on, this, on this website you can see what room you will book and um, how expensive it is. Uh, and if you shared facilities, how big the room is, where it is situated, and uh, then you make a final choice, and uh, well, that is basically how it works. Yeah, sounds quite straightforward to me. Yeah. Great, and we have another question also concerning housing, which I think is a very legitimate question because sometimes rooms in the Netherlands are not entirely uh, furnished or not furnished at all. So if your room is not furnished, where can you get furniture for your room? So maybe this is a question for Hussein if you feel like asking, um, answering this. Um, I Normally you would go for second-hand stuff because they're the cheapest ones. Mm -hmm. You have uh, physical places around you, uh, physical and second-hand stores. Uh, which you can shop from, but the most well-known one that everybody almost uses is uh, it's called Market Market Plots, and it's online. And actually, I got like a sofa bed for free the first night I got into my apartment. So you're gonna get lucky. Uh, just mm. uh, just look throughout the website, and there is a lot of stuff that people are giving away for um, little pay or almost nothing for free, so you can just check out the stuff and get what you want. Obviously. Yeah, Marktplatz is a really good uh, source for sure. Also Facebook Marketplace is another one that I've used plenty of mm -hmm. times in the past and um, also works really well. And just like you said, sometimes people just want to get rid of their things and they are even willing to give that for free. Maybe sometimes you need to arrange the moving, for example, maybe you're buying a couch, for example, and then you need to uh, transport it from one place to the other, which might yeah. be a bit of a hassle at certain points. but it's always like really worth the effort, yeah. in my opinion, to get 
maybe free furniture I sometimes. I you were going to mention Ikea. Ikea. Ah, yeah, Ikea so is there an Ikea, Ikea. Ni- nearby? Yes, yeah, nearby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you need a car, though. Yeah. yeah. But that's something that in most cases can be arranged, can especially be arranged. during the first few moments at the Han. Uh, then you get to know some students, perhaps, and some of them will yep. have a car for you and can just drive you around a little. And the mm-hmm. IKEA close to Arnhem is only about 15 minutes away, really. So yeah, that's yeah. super close by. And if you're doing your study program in Nijmegen, that would only be about 30 minutes. So also quite nearby. Yeah. Also, like for my apartment, because it was like non furnished when I got in, I almost ordered everything from IKEA because I love IKEA. Oh. And you know, you pay a little bit of extra fee, but they're going to deliver it to you with a van. So that's also an option if you don't have a car. Yeah. And SSHN right. offers, um, uh, well, via Han, it's, it's, um, it has a bed. It has all basic things. Oh, great. Uh, Wi Fi, quite basic. Uh, a bed, uh, a closet, uh, a table, a chair, so you don't have to bring that. Oh, but that's really reassuring to hear, especially maybe after a long travel from yeah. somewhere in the world, you can already like come to, to your house in Narnem or Nijmegen through SSHN and you don't need to arrange a bed, <laughs> at least for the first few nights <laughs> you're all set. Yes, and um, of course, in, in a world that is just really dominated by this informatics and everything that's going on behind a computer, there is also always a bit of the potential for scamming. So a question that we have received is, are there any tips for not being scammed when looking for a room by yourself? So um, maybe Caroline, would you like to take this uh, question? Scamming happens, Mm. indeed. There are always people who take advantage uh, of uh, people who look for housing, especially in this, um, well, there's a shortage for rooms. Um, I would uh, recommend to contact the Han Housing Office. They have um, trustful addresses, uh, trustful landlords, and good uh, websites, and also they have tips for scamming for you. Excellent. And I'm being informed that there is a link that is now being published on the chat, so that will also help out in most cases when it comes to um, to scamming, just to be a bit more aware of what's going on on the uh, internet per se. Uh, I believe that these were all of the questions that we have received so far, but I wanted to hear from you, is there any when it comes especially to the topic of housing, Asen, is there anything that you would recommend to future students that are coming to Arnhem, for example? Something to be aware about. Um, I would say the main thing I pointed out during the talk, the fiscal year, mm-hmm. uh, when they might change the prices, so you need to consider that. And also try to look, of course, for furnished places, that is, as it was mentioned, but also see what kind of utilities they offer, because some of them come without utilities and you have to pay extra. At the moment, I pay extra for you know, energy, gas, electricity, so it's more expensive, of course. Mm-hmm. But uh, at the student building, I had everything and the Wi-Fi uh, included, and it was cheaper. So yeah. that's something that you want to consider. Yeah, definitely something to be aware about. And Caroline, from your end, do you feel like we have covered most of the um, items regarding either housing, admissions, and application procedures? Or is there anything else that comes to your mind that you would like to share with us in these last few moments? I watched the videos. It was it was very helpful. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think for all new students, it's also uh, very nice and very helpful to watch these um, because, um, well, to be here, to, to get here well prepared. Yeah. Um, after your, your, your start and you have the introduction and you will meet all classmates and, and, and all other students, well, they will help you yeah. wherever they can. Absolutely. And also prior to coming to the Han, there are already like different Facebook groups that you can consult where there are certain um, current students in the Netherlands, also mm-hmm. new incoming students. So you can already try to establish a network in case you want to be even more so informed of what you really need in order to come prepared. Yeah. Or also you can always feel free to really contact the Han and, or the housing office if you have really any questions along the way. So that's also something that when I found out myself, it was quite reassuring in a way. 
All right, so that concludes our time for this session on admission, application, and housing. Thank you so much, Hussein and Caroline, for joining me during this session and for sharing with us your insight. Uh, we will have an upcoming section right now on study and life at the Han, starting in 15 minutes from this moment. Thank you very much for joining us today, and uh, we hope to see you in a little bit. Goodbye. Thank you for having me.